All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of interest to libraries across, this, uh, across Nebraska and across the country. Actually, um, we broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and watch all of our shows on our archives. And I'll show you at the end of today's episode where you can get to those archives. We do uh, both the recordings, live show and recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please uh, share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think that may be interested in any of the topics that we have on the live show or on the archives. We do a mixture of things here on, on Compass Live, book reviews, interviews, uh, demos of services of products, um, mini training sessions sometimes. Uh, basically, anything um, of interest to libraries. Our only really criteria is that it's something that libraries are doing. And we as the Nebraska Library Commission serve all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, uh, schools, corrections, museums. If you're a library, there's probably something on the show for you. Um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do sessions, and we have guest speakers that come in sometimes. And we have a mixture of that today. We have a hybrid today. Yes, we join the group. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, today we are talking about the 2018 One Book One Nebraska selection, uh, Nebraska Presence and Anthology of Anthology of Poetry. Um, and I'm just going to hand it over to you, Mary Jo, to start since you, you know, post everything, and cool. we'll introduce who and tell you who we have here as we go. Thanks, Kristen. Yeah. Um, I'm Mary Jo Ryan with the Nebraska Library Commission, and I would like. Well, I guess the rest of the folks who are here to just introduce themselves and Tessa will move the camera slightly so you can see everybody and sooner or later we'll get them all in the frame. Mary okay, Kane. I'm Mary Kane Stillwell, one of the editors of Nebraska Presence. And I'm Greg Kosminski, the other, other editor of the uh, Nebraska Presence and the publisher of the Backwaters Press. And I'm Rod Wagner, director of the Library Commission and an ex officio board member of the Nebraska <coughs> Center for the Book. And I'm Becky Faber, a member of the board for the Nebraska Center for the Book, and also the chair of the One Book, One Nebraska Selection Committee. Thank you all. Um, just for kind of starters, what I think we'll do is just, oh, I don't I can't see my slide. There we go. So, <laughs> I think that'll be good. I won't Thanks. go through a few no, slides here. There we go. We'll go through a few well, slides that will sort of introduce the One Book, One Nebraska program. And then I think the primary, primarily what we want to do today is have a conversation with you folks. So let me just say a few things. The whole point of this One Book, One Nebraska is to encourage people all over the state to read the same book and talk about it. Um, a committee from the Center for the Book, as Becky mentioned, uh, selects the book. And it's sponsored by the Center for the Book, Humanities Nebraska, and Nebraska Library Commission. As you can see, we've been at this for a few years, and I think this is a pretty good rose gallery of wonderful stories by Nebraska libraries, or about Nebraska, by the way. There is actually a couple of books that are not by Nebraska writers, but they were about Nebraska. Um, this particular book has poems by more than 80 contemporary Nebraska poets, um, and I, we won't get to all of them, but I encourage every one of you to be sure and read this book and take a look at it. Um, I think some of these poems are especially lovely read aloud. So anything you can do in your libraries to encourage out loud reading is, is a, would be great. Um, obviously, there are some famous poets, Twyla Hansen, our Nebraska State poet, Ted Kuser, our former poet laureate of the United States, and William Cleckman, a former state poet. But um, there's also many others, and there are wonderful poems in this book. Um, I wanted to make sure you know that the book club kits are circulating like mad, but that doesn't mean that you can't still get a book club kit for your reading group or your discussion group or your program that you're planning. Um, check out um, news and events so you can see what's going on across the state. Um, I wanted to mention that we're on Facebook, and there's quite a conversation going on on Facebook. We'd love to have you join us. So friend our Facebook page, One Book, One Nebraska, 
Um, obviously, you go to Facebook.com first. Type in Year One Book One Nebraska. And really to encourage everybody to create local programs, we've got a publicity toolkit with bookmarks and business cards. You can print off posters. We've got some discussion questions that are helpful. So again, there are lots of resources also from Humanity, Humanities Nebraska. Um, this is a, a very special resource, by the way, which basically pays for a scholar or a poet to come to your community and do a live program in your library. And basically all you gotta do is go to the Humanities Nebraska website and uh, some of the programming that we've got available includes um, poet programs by Mary Kay Stilwell, who's here and she'll be talking with us. Um, also Lucy Atkins, Marge Sizer, Clyde Hansen. So here's where you go to book your speaker. And when you book your speaker, you um, also get the information about how to get the grant to pay the speaker from Humanities Nebraska. So getting involved, book club, book talk, book a program with the author through the Humanities Nebraska Speakers Bureau. Be sure and, and pay attention to local media. Other ideas for programming. I guess at this point I wanna mention that I know that some of you may have already done a program or have already got some ideas for programs and we would really like that if you would share that either now or when the poets are speaking. Um, at any point during the program, please share any ideas or thoughts that come up. But as Kristen mentioned, you can just type them in the chat box, or if you would rather use your microphone or your, your telephone connection, just ask us to unmute you. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that October 27th, we'll have a special program. Oh, is that right? It says 2018. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is right. Yeah, there. Right. Good. Yeah, I for a minute, I thought, oh, I've got the wrong date up here. It says yeah. 2018, but I don't think it's October 27th. But it is. It's October 27th at the uh, Nebraska History Museum in Lincoln. We'll have the celebration of Nebraska books and a special uh, poetry program will highlight that celebration. So with that, I think we can, let me see, make sure. Oh, yeah, for more information, I'll put this back up later. But for now, I think we can get rid of the slides and go back to the people, the real people. And we'll, go, we'll I think, turn it over to Mary Kay and Greg and Becky to start. And Rod, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask them, let's put up for, there we go. Hi, folks, there you are. I want to put up the, oh, the oh, website's down there under, under uh, Explore. Ta-da, there, there we go. go. There you go, that's the website. And we can do more with the website later if there are questions or interest in them. Good to have that on the screen. Yeah. So, thoughts? How, how did this all start? I mean, I know this book is not brand new, but something must have started this idea of having an anthology of Nebraska poets. What 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 happened, Mary Kay and Greg? How did how did it happen? It was all a terrible accident. <laughs> <laughs> a dream. <laughs> Actually, uh, we were at the uh, Nebraska Book Festival in Kearney, uh, and I think it was the year after, or maybe just the year that Ted Cruiser was going to be named Poet Laureate of the United States. Huh? And uh, one of uh, a poet that uh, the Backwaters Press has published, uh, well, five books by now, uh, Marjorie Sizer. Um, at that time, uh, we published, I think, two of her books. Came up to the to the table where the Backwaters Press had its uh, uh, books on display and and um, said that she really thinks that we ought to do an anthology of Nebraska poetry and and uh, I told her that uh, that sounds like a great idea uh, would uh, would she like to help edit it and she said no <laughs> because she had been, she had been involved with me. Uh, with a, a previous anthology that she and I and uh, Lisa Sandlin edited um, entitled uh, uh, Times of Sorrow, Times of Grace, writing by women from the Great Plains, High Plains. And uh, I, I, I always say that if March hadn't have been involved, that we'd still be working on getting that together today. So <laughs> I, I'm the most disorganized person in the world. And so. And Mary Kay has been fulfilling that function 
sort of. That part of my brain since uh, <laughs> as best I can. <laughs> so and uh, I guess I can pick up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I opened up my I got went to my inbox one morning and I wrote it down because it just tickled me. I got this email from Greg and the subject line read opportunity to work your socks off for no pay. <laughs> And so he uh, tried out his idea on me, and it really sounded like it was time. Um, and Nebraska's been rich in anthologies, um, but there hadn't been one, uh, a representative anthology for a while. And it seemed like a good idea. Also, I had to go to Nebraska, I mean to New York, to learn about Nebraska poetry <laughs> in the 60s. Uh, I didn't know we wrote poetry out here. I went there and um, I really started studying poetry there. And my teacher was Bill Packard, and he introduced me to Kuzer and Kuzma and Raz and the poets here. And I thought, good Lord, <laughs> we got to get. You know, I'm sure other people in Nebraska knew about poetry, but it had just gone past me. So this was a wonderful opportunity to take a look at what we write, um, what subjects are interesting to us, and to have a conversation, not only with readers, but other poets uh, writing in or about the state. So like Pandora, I opened up the box <laughs> and, uh, and the rest is history. And it turned out just fantastic. I mean, you guys have, I know, sold lots of copies and really enjoyed the interaction with these poets. Yeah. We got so many submissions. You did. I, I don't remember how many. Uh, well, at the time, I wrote down 1,500 um, pages of poetry. Some were typed, some were on computers, some were handwritten. Um, and a lot of good poems. I mean, we had a hard time. Yeah winnowing down to a manageable. So we would have this tone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We met to edit face to face probably uh, four or five times. Yeah, I suppose I so. And um, we had a process where we, uh, no poem would get through unless all three of us agreed on it. So huh? um, that was, a, that's pretty, pretty tough because uh, Usually, I think most places you'll have a like two out of three people have to okay a poem before it gets in. But uh, so that was a pretty high bar, and um, we well, we had a lot of uh, really excellent uh, things to choose between and uh, make decisions about, and, and we're, uh, it turned out, you know, in retrospect, it's been a couple of years since I had gone through and read this uh, book and. Uh, I, I'm, if I do say so myself, I'm really surprised at the quality of the poems. They're, they're really good poems, <laughs> so exciting to read. And the nice thing about this website is you can, there's a tab for, um, I think it's poems. So you can go right to poems. So there's one right there. So this is Nebraska. And yeah. there's one, yeah. Oh, oh, all the way in the right is poems. Yep. Yeah. So what a... I suppose one can't have favorites when one has <laughs> an anthology. <clears throat> but one of my favorites is highlighted here, Father Dancing by Fred Sidek. And I can read it now or later. Oh, read it now. Okay. My father liked to dance alone late at night when he was sure the rest of the house was sleeping. He would turn on the old Silco and dance with the broom. One summer when mother sent me out with his lunch, I caught him doing the rumba in the berry patch. Music seemed to come from his pores. One winter he waltzed for the cows. I went to the barn to feed the cats. I found him doing a perfect pirouette. His arms spun out and up until he was like a, grand, a giant top spinning before the stalls. The cows were uh, lowing into their cuds. I could tell they'd seen it all before. <laughs> Occasionally he would spin to a stop, bow, kiss one of them right on the nose, and two step back into his turning. One day I caught him dancing nude in the small meadow down Pamstar Creek. He and the dance were exquisite as prayer. 
I thought of Noah's sons covering their father's nakedness and wondered why. <laughs> so that's a, a useful tool on the website is to get a sampling. And I think that that poem is a good is a really good example of how much energy and life and visual uh, character there is in in this whole anthology. So that was a great one. To pick. Good. How about, how about uh, Rod and Becky? Could you kind of give us a little uh, feedback on what it was like since you're both on the the committee that selected this? I know you had lots of books to read and pick from. One of the things that I think is spectacular about One Book, One Nebraska is that the initial call for nominations comes from Nebraskans. Uh, they nominate books. We have some basic criteria which each book must meet. That, for example, having an ISBN, being readily available, being written by a Nebraska writer or taking place in Nebraska or having a Nebraska theme. And once we are able to winnow out any books that might not meet those criteria, the committee sets off reading and it's just a joy. Um, and the anthology was a book that through rounds of readers kept moving forward. So the readers on the committee found the same joy in the book. Um, it's unique for us because it is poetry and uh, primarily the genres that have been selected for One Book One Nebraska have um, either been fiction or nonfiction. Um, this is unique and the state has been ready for it. Poetry is really on the upswing in Nebraska. It's not just that children in elementary school. Someone was telling me the other day that her child had to write a poem in uh, a fifth grade class. And uh, I really smiled at that because that's when I wrote my first poem was in Mrs. Kickle's class when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> Okay. And I, I could still recite it to you if we had much more time. Um, <laughs> but the idea that that writing exercise is not just a blip. We have high school students now so engaged in louder than a bomb, slam poetry. Uh, and we have people who are writing and publishing in ways that, um, as Mary Kay said, in previous times, we might not have had any idea that we had so much talent in this state. So in the process of this book coming to the short list and then being selected for One Book, One Nebraska, the state was ready for that. And I think that shows through uh, the programs that are taking place throughout Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our Poetry Out Loud state winners who went to the nationals came in second place. And yes, it's reading someone else's poem out loud. But what it also tells us is uh, students are reading poetry, connecting with poetry, and are sharing poetry. And we're making national, um, you know, placing nationally. We're a strong state. And it's a natural expression of thought. Yeah. The committee has had um, interest in this book, I think, for several years. It's was one of our nominees that that uh, has been on our mind, and so we it, it was just an opportune time for us to uh, select this book this year. Um, I know it's been a favorite of mine and uh, others as well. So I, I was wondering what your experience has been thus far. We're still early in the year. You've been out and do, have done presentations in various places. So what's been the response you've had thus far? those uh, those events that we have this far? Well, so far, let me see, I've taken part in um, reading at Auburn at the library and um, one at uh, the Bookworm in Omaha and there was one at uh, Mojava here in Lincoln, uh, the first 
first week of January. I think I couldn't make it to that one. And oh, Bell Bellevue had a really nice reading. At, uh, That's at college, uh, right? Yeah, Bellevue College. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the library. Uh, that was gotten together by uh, Cliff Mason. He's a professor, uh, uh, department chair of English down there. And um, um, let me see. I think that's all the ones I've been to, but I think there has been a couple more mm -hmm. uh, that I couldn't make it to. The and book story here. And there's a million coming up. They have the fit fit. Uh, Francis and Finch. Finch had one. Yeah. So. Yeah, we may not have them all on the calendar yet. We will be getting them on here. As soon as possible, but uh, I see we've got a June 8th reading at Chapters Books and Gifts in Seward, and a June 24th Brownville Schoolhouse Art Gallery reading, and I'm sure right. there's others that we, we need to get updated on here. Uh, I brought a list for you today. Fabulous. <laughs> what do you got coming up? June 8th, uh, Chapters. We're going to do a book signing and reading out there in Seward. It's to coincide with the bicycles across Nebraska. Oh, that's cool. So they'll be coming into the town square, and there's always a lot going on then. Uh, so we'll be reading there. As you mentioned, uh, the Brownville Fine Arts Association on June 24th. Uh, June 10th, we'll be at the Norfolk Public Library. And we should probably talk a little bit more about the workshops um, in a minute. <clears throat> July 22nd, we'll be at the Nyhart Foundation. In Bancroft. In right. Bancroft. August 25th, Nebraska Book Fest. Uh, November 8th at the Center for Great Plains Study. Um, and there are a couple others that are still in the works, but these are the ones that... And June 7th, I think, uh, here in Lincoln, right? Yes. For the, at the Constellation Studios. I thought that sounded like such an interesting uh, merging of poetry and art. It's going to be sponsored by the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, and they're doing kind of a special program, right? Greg? Yes, Karakuns is going to, has selected a couple poems from the anthology. She's going to typeset them. And while we're there, we're going to watch and I hope assist in uh, printing them on her handmade paper. So people who come will, will have some poets will read. There's a time limit. Or we'd be there all night, which I suppose isn't bad. But, a marathon. Um, yes. Um, so after they're made, we will have souvenirs to take uh, home with us. And, and her work, of course, is nationally, internationally recognized. Um, and so it's just a wonderful meeting, as you say, of the arts. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. That's uh, June 7th, 6 to 8. It's open to the public. So come on down to Constellation Studios. Yes, and it's open to people outside of Lincoln too, so you can come to Lincoln, make that a, a Lincoln, a trip to Lincoln, go out to dinner, come to Constellation Studios. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and I, I think the poems that she selected were one by Ted Cruiser and one by Amy Clett. Wouldn't that be fun to get one to do that? I would like to do it myself. And yeah. that's pretty I understand why that might not be the I don't think she's an announcer. Oh, she's an announcer. Oh, I'm just no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets. You heard it first. Yeah. So there, there's also. Uh, I can edit things out of so no, no. <laughs> We were also approached by uh, Greg Simon, who's a jazz professor at the uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln, to. Uh, he wanted to excerpt uh, song, songs, to create a song cycle with poems from the, uh, from the book. And. Um, we got, I got him in touch with, uh, oh, probably 10 or 12 of the poets. I, I think he's got nine, eight or nine uh, uh, books that, or poems that he selected that he's going to set to uh, uh, music. And he's working on that on, a, on a, a fellowship right now when he's on vacation from the university, so he's hoping to have it ready in the fall sometime. I'm not sure. That is so cool. If he has it already, we yeah. definitely need him at the celebration yeah. of Nebraska yeah. Books, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds very sort of beat yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz and poetry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the, some of the programs you're doing, they vary, don't they? I mean, they obviously do. some are reading. Yeah. Uh, as we mentioned, someone mentioned, uh, there are 80, I think 82 poets. So a couple, the Nyhart Center, and I think it was in Norfolk, 
and other groups around the state can go. There's a tab on our poetry page that says the poets. And you can scroll down if you want and give little bios. And they've uh, several groups have chosen poets from their neck of the woods to invite out through a Humanities Nebraska grant um, to come out and talk about the book. And this is a good time, I think, to talk about the Speakers Bureau at Humanities yes. Nebraska. Um, we were offering two workshops. One is called Nebraska Our Song, which is a discussion of, of the poetry in the book and poetry in general. And the other is Nebraska Our News, which talks about the, the anthology, but also invites writers to come in. And we can talk about the writing of particular poems and give props. So if they want to write there and then go home and continue writing, they can. And just a brief description, it, it's on the website. But uh, the description is, join the editors and poets of Nebraska Presence um, in the exploration and celebration of our state's history and people. This program is part reading and part discussion. And then it goes on to describe the program. Um, but we say, please let us know of your special interests with your request. Um, and we'll try to find speakers who address your concerns or people who are from your neck of the woods because we do have poets from all over the state. Um, or I suppose if you want to explore a theme, tell us your theme and we can put together a program for you. Same way with our news. If you have a group of writers who want to um, sponsor a group of poets coming out, uh, let us know. Again, maybe you can pick your favorites and we'll try to round them up. And the good thing about working through the Speakers Bureau, especially for um, cities, you know, that are pretty far away from where most of the poets live, it allows the poets to get a stipend and get their uh, mileage paid for. Because many of our work, our poets still work um, nine to five jobs or, or teaching jobs. So this is a nice incentive to support their participation in their events. So I really um, think that's a way to go for libraries and, and groups. Nonprofit, I think we have to be around the state. So I think that if you have like a way, maybe through your Facebook page, to try to engage the writers in your community, um, maybe put out a call through Facebook for, to the writers in your community to join you and some of the that's poets for a writing muse mm -hmm. workshop or you know, whatever you decide will be the best. And you can ask them, what would you like? Would you like to have a, a poetry reading session? Would you like to have a writing workshop? And perhaps through Facebook, you can engage them, or through Twitter, if you're using Twitter. However you reach out to them. Yeah, whatever you think would be the best way. And on the Nebraska as Muse theme, I'd like to read a poem by uh, Don Welch. He's a... Uh, poet who passed away recently who was widely known throughout the state uh, and taught for years and years at uh, the University of Nebraska at Kearney. And uh, this poem is entitled, appropriately enough, Nebraska. And it kind of deals with the theme of Nebraska as a muse. Going west when the sun is going down, following the highways like light, cord light cords. If Nebraska were the name of a Russian woman, they would love her. There would be a certain large boned beauty about her. Or she would be dressed in black and lace. Her waist would be small, and she would drag her long dress over a floor into a study lined with French books. She would be a pawn in huge novels of war. As it is, she is a woman of spare beauty. Turning away from him so that the fine hollows of her back were toward the bed, she said, Why do you do this to me? Why do you keep imagining me in other places and states? And why do you keep assuming our children are unhappy? Interesting. And that raises, I think, uh, a very uh, nice point because you both have read poems by major Nebraska poets who have passed since the anthology was put together. That's right. And that doesn't mean that their works will not be read 
at these readings um, because the, the readers coming out are, are wanting to share not only their particular poems, but also other poems that uh, the audience would enjoy. And so Fred's poem has been read several times and yeah. the same with Don's work and uh, any other poets who are a part of this anthology, but no longer with us. Did you have something you wanted to read, Becky? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> Yeah, as we were putting the work together, as Mary Kay was putting the work together, and I was sending her an email every couple of days finding out what she was doing, uh, <laughs> we, we had to go through the list of the poets, and I think there are 13 of the poets in this anthology who have since passed away. Since, uh, as a matter of fact, we just lost uh, a pretty famous Nebraskan a couple of days ago, Ruth Thone, and she's, yes. got, she's got a short poem in here about uh, having started to lose her mental faculties. It's a really incredible poem. So go ahead, Becky. Okay. Well, this poem is entitled The Fisherman's Wife. And because I have lived in the center of the United States, I'm always fascinated by how people live and work and eat in other places. So The Fisherman's Wife. She waits tables at the Bayview Cafe, demystifying the contents of seafood chowder for tourists. She tells me that her husband is a fisherman, asks where I am from, sighs, and says she has never been west of Boston. She cannot imagine Middle America, a place without coastline, a place where people eat beef daily. Each time she moves from table to kitchen, I notice a different tattoo, legs and arms twirling in color like a globe. On long winter evenings, I will eat chowder from a can. The main fisherman with red cracked fingers will trace each tattoo. The fisherman's wife will close her eyes and tell him that he is all of the world that she needs. Who wrote that? I wrote that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Any other uh, thoughts that you might have, or um, those of you who are in our audience, anything come up for you so far as we've been talking in terms of what you, what do you think about uh, your community's reaction to poetry? I mean, we know that there is like slam poetry and, and lots yeah. of poetry happening among young people. I guess we're curious about whether that's happening in your community. You can type into your question section if you have anything to say. Right, the or chat box. box. Yep, or chat box. Do you want to show us where that's at on the screen? Maybe? Um, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's sort of over here on the yeah. side. So, yeah. um, I, I think that, that Kit has questions, right? Discussion questions, yeah. Um, and book groups have found this very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, especially some people are kind of timorous when it comes to poetry. They haven't read it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Or when they went to school, they read poets by long dead people that didn't really relate to their lives. And so they're coming to poetry, to contemporary Nebraska poetry but with some reservations and the questions. Um, and we let the poets uh, ask questions about their own work uh, that might reveal something about their poems, but also other poets in the book. So in the kit, you'll find uh, questions that our poets came up with about particular poems and then some general questions about the book in general. And I'll, I think I can quickly read a, an example of how this might help someone in your library or your book group kind That'd of come to poetry. Um, I'm going to read a poem by Lucy Atkins. She's out from, she came from Genoa. I she lives here in Lincoln, right? Now she yeah. does. 
uh, she and Kathleen West, another poet in the book. So it seems to be fertile ground out there in Genoa for poets. <laughs> so her poem is on Pleasant Valley Road, and the title runs right into the poem, and the poem is composed of one sentence. And so the poem is all about connection. On the Pleasant Valley Road, Nance County, 1941-1945. On the Pleasant Valley Road that rolls from Palmer to Fullerton, all the farmhouses sit square to the road, and there are stars in the windows for those at war, blue stars for service, gold for dead, and above all God's stars shining, their light weak and cold, but shining over these little farms, over the farmers and farm wives, the much beloved sons, the skinny armed daughters, and in cities and towns shining across the bomber plants, over schoolyards and shipyards, shining down too over France and Italy, over the darkness of Poland and Romania, over Arswitz and Dachau, the furnace is stoked and blazing, and Hiroshima where all the lights went out. So she went to the State Museum here in town. There was a World War I exhibit on of artifacts. And so she got to thinking about war in her hometown and what it represented, what it was like for her to grow up. And then she started writing about um, how war affects the whole um, world. And the poems that she listed in the kit are, um, First, the subject of On the Pleasant Valley Road is life in Nebraska during World War I. What do you think it was like living in Nebraska during the war times of World Wars I and II? Do any of your older family members or friends speak of this? For those Nebraskans on the home front, what other elements of pride and anguish and despair were endured? Well, this opens up a conversation among the people at the book group, but also they could take a question like this home um, to their grandparents or their parents. Um, one woman talked about going to a nursing home with the poem and getting recollections of people. Um, I don't know that there were any veterans in the home, but war, a war widow and a war wife. And, um, so poetry is a starts a conversation, it is a conversation, but then it can ripple out through your whole community in really interesting ways. Um, and so take a look at the questions in the kit and see where they lead you and your, your readers. I think that's a great idea. Um, many of our libraries have programming uh, relationships, partnerships with uh, nursing homes, assisted living centers, uh, wow. senior meals, congregate centers where uh, oh, yeah. seniors Come together for lunch and play cards and that kind of thing and that's an ideal outreach program is to take a few of these poems and, and read them and then ask questions and get people talking about them so and that is a question excellent. someone had actually about how it is hard to people don't read poetry a lot and this has been a difficult thing but these questions that they wanted to know that was a question that they submitted that particular poem is there questions just focus on every poem in the book? I mean, that would be a huge amount of questions, I suppose, but um, unfortunately, no. I'm sure there isn't. But for some of them, they are, they're not just about the book in general, it's specific to, to certain poems. Um, like general questions, aren't there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are 23 pages of questions. Oh, wow, okay. And so I would plenty guess, of things to help you get, figure, get started yeah, in the discussion. Okay. Many of them are about individual poems. Um, some ask you to look at two poems about the same subject matter and compare mm -hmm. and contrast them. I, it's not here, but I know there's one about, can you find the five uh, poems about rivers in the book? Uh -huh. uh, you know, what, is that your, um, does that describe your river? Um, what rivers are you familiar with? How, did, how does the poet convey the river? Mm -hmm. So it, it leads you into more than one. Um, poem, or there are general ones. Um, let's see. I think that one of our rivers would be a good one to take to the NRD meeting. Oh, <laughs> Get them talking at the NRD meeting about the poem about rivers. 
Uh, here's one. Do you think that living in a place like Nebraska with expansive vistas and big skies affect us as individuals? How? How it, is this changing? If so, is this reflected in the poems in the anthology? In what way? This is a more general question by Lucy that gets us thinking about um, our state mm -hmm. and how it's changing. And you mentioned that you could have a program, a librarian could have a program with a theme. And I think that is exactly. a theme of, in this book of poems. That's yeah. a theme is Nebraska. What is it about Nebraska? What is it that, that gets people talking, that gets people thinking, that gets people creating? Exactly. So that would be the theme. Other themes that you think are in the book, that are in the poems in the book, might reflect? Well, one thing I, I want, not exactly on the themes, but what I uh, found in this collection is that um, there are poems about life and death and uh, marriages and breakups and and uh, working the hogs out at the farm and you know being in the city and there 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 are all kinds of uh, different things in these poems that. When I was growing up, I, I hated poetry <laughs> because <laughs> it was all about castles and kings and stuff that I had absolutely no connection with, and I and I I I just didn't like it. And then so I was uh, amazed when I started at the university and discovered that poetry can actually be about things that I know about, and and that's what's in in this anthology. There's I don't think there's a poem in here that anybody will pick up. Uh, that they won't be able to connect to something that was real to them at one time that happened to this poet too that that poet wrote about and and um, uh, just like there, I was reading through it last night and there's a there's a poem by uh, Judith Sornberger is that how she says her name Sornberger about uh, papering uh, wallpapering and taking wallpaper off of the Walls with her mom, and then they were singing a Patsy Cline song along with it, and, and uh, that the the song <coughs> uh, interacted with their memories, and and uh, it's a it's a cool poem. I'll read it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I think that that's what uh, the the poems throughout this book are poems that are related to things that we've all done in our lives and 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 things that I, I didn't know when I started out getting interested in poetry you could actually even write about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, this one's uh, uh, Judith Sornberger, uh, Wallpapering to Patsy Cline. And it's dedicated to my mother, for my mother and sister. We're here to cover the cracks in the wall, to forgive the bad taste of previous owners, to bury the orange and brown daisies in a service, transforming this house into yours, sister. We don't drywall or drive nails, but like our mother's mother, a good seamstress, we know how to make an off-cast garment fit our wishes. We form a procession we've practiced before, kitchen to dining room, this time bearing drop cloths, utensils, Dutch ovens of paste. Patsy sings us through some, Patsy sings us through some stripping, I fall to pieces, <laughs> a tune we all know too well. We work as when my ballerinas, your floral stripes, and mom's teacup scenes met in the hallway's neutral eggshell. There are too many generations of wallpaper here to strip. We stop when we come to fully petaled cabbage roses. Patsy says she has to choose today between a poor man's roses and rich man's gold. Choose the cold, we're yelling, <laughs> giddy in the futility of warning. We're brushing bubbles to the bottom, giggling, but they won't be brushed away, and we find they're buried under the old paper, an error made so far back we can't hope to mend it. Choose the gold, Patsy, and buy yourself some roses. And now she loves him so much it hurts her. I don't know that part of the song. A sob in her voice we recognize having heard it often in each other's. But mother, sister, deep within my heart lies a melody, one that doesn't twang with regret. Patsy's right. We need some loving too. Yes, we do. Indeed we do. You know we do. But look at the room we've created. Pastels of triangles, lovers' triangles. 
but not in that old stripped down usage. Think of them as pyramids, homes to hold us forever, a woman at each angle. And yeah, that's a cool poem, and it's just about you know wallpapering with your mother and yeah. your sister. You know, no forty-page no. saga about <laughs> wars and peace, and a wonderful technique of bringing in musical lyrics. Yeah, uh, and finding how that level of creativity, which is playing with words, works so nicely with the poem. How you can melt those together, and I think of Nebraska presence as. Driving across Nebraska on two lane roads instead of the interstate. Mm -hmm. And all that you see, you should be going a little slower than <laughs> on the interstate. <laughs> but you see things, you absorb things that you're going to completely miss by going through very rapidly. We're not a flyover state. There's just a tremendous amount of beautiful life and creation going on in this state. And, and I think a wonderful way in talking with people about these poems is to begin by asking them, what are the stereotypes of Nebraska? Well, that it's flat. Uh, no, it's not all flat. That it's boring. Uh, if you've ever been in Lincoln on a football Saturday, <laughs> that's not boring. And so starting to break through some of the stereotypes or play to the stereotypes. And this book just has something for everyone. And when you were reading that, all I could think about was how much fun it would be to do a program with like middle school or high school kids reading that poem and asking them to then create with their own music lyrics that are in their head that they hear when they're do, trying to do something else, that music that they're doing. And then yeah. see what they yeah. could do with that. It would be so fun to see what they came up with. See if they put in a little rap. I'm yeah. sure they would. I don't know. But yeah. We'd have to see. Yeah. Any other yeah. thoughts from our audience? Thank you for your questions and your comments. And, and while, while you're checking, uh, in addition to the Poetry, I found the uh, introductory observations, Greg and Mary Kay, uh, especially interesting. Uh, one, one that struck me was uh, a question that uh, Greg, or no, maybe it was Mary Kay, that uh, he said, uh, you are fre frequently asked, and that is there such a thing as Nebraska poetry? And then you also uh, comment on, is there a relationship between Nebraska poetry and American poetry in general? Mm -hmm. Now, this book was published 10 years ago about. Um, have your observations changed at all on from there about those questions? Oh, wow. Um, one of the things that struck me over the past couple of years is the influence of Carl Shapiro, who came out here in the 50s to teach and to take over the editorial responsibilities of the Prairie Schooner. Um, not only did he influence a whole generation and even subsequent generations of poets, because he taught uh, Taylor and Clef Korn and Scheel and Welsh. And, uh, he was a good friend of Hilda Raz. Um, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, that was a time Poetry took a big, deep breath and sort of reinvented some of itself. More women started writing during this period of time. Judith uh, put out, the, I think, one of the first anthologies of women poetry um, in the early 80s. But it came from that, generated from that time. There were presses that started uh, joining, out here. Joining rooms or all my grandmothers? All my, you could say, yeah. yeah. Um, Ray Kuzma had a press, Kuzer had a press, Shield had a press for chapbooks, and there were other little presses here in Nebraska. So I think we entered a national conversation at that time. Um, but I also think, well, I think some emotions are international. You write a, you read a poem about the death of someone, and it doesn't really matter where it is. But when you read a poem, um, the set in your state, somehow it has some resonance. You know the places. You probably know the people. Nebraska is such a small place um, in some ways. 
then I, I think of Nebraska as much more international in its poetry and at the same time more local. So I've kind of changed in that way. It's sort of Janice two-sided. <laughs> but Greg, you've been in the publishing of poetry real up close. What changes do you see? Um, now you're putting me on the spot. Oh, well, <laughs> sorry, but we can come back to that. I, uh, I'll pass on that question because I don't really have an answer. <laughs> well, it makes it's been, well, it's changed. A lot has changed uh, in, in a lot of respects. For one thing, uh, since Carl Shapiro was here in the 1950s, uh, starting in about the 1980s there has been uh or late 70s the, the rise of the master of fine arts programs throughout the country and and now there are literally hundreds of colleges and universities running masters of fine arts programs and cranking out certified poets by the by the bushel so uh that's there's a, a lot higher level i think of uh uh ability out there that you see in magazines and so on than there was 20 years ago. I mean, uh, the, the poems seem a lot more polished and finished. And I don't know if they got any more heart to them or depth, but they they, they sure are uh, uh, well worked. And um, um, there has been a tremendous increase in the number of um, literary magazines. Uh, uh, at the time when I started writing, there were probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred or two hundred little handmade magazines like Greg was doing and Ted was doing. And um, now there are thousands of them online. Uh, you can, you can uh, I don't know how many magazines are online that uh, don't publish print anymore. I'm kind of married to print. I, I just, I love hold, holding the book in my hand. So. Uh, what do you think about the small presses? Are, is it a growing thing? Are there more small presses or less? I, I think there are, I don't, I've never, I don't have any stats, but I right. think there are a lot more. That's what it seemed like to me, but I don't know. Yeah, the, you know, the international directory of small presses and, and poetry publishers or whatever that used to come out that, uh, when I first started back in the 80s was about that thick. And the last time they published a print version of it that I saw, it was like that thick. And oh, yeah. It's just yeah. getting bigger and bigger all the time. And uh, so there's a lot of people out there doing. Uh, there's probably, I think, two or three online magazines in Lincoln here alone. And we haven't really said anything about uh, poetry with young people, but I just want to encourage you, uh, librarians, especially uh, those of you who work with children, to um, experiment with poetry programming with your children. I mean, um, I had a, I have a previous life in working in uh, daycare, and we did a ton of poetry programming with children in those days. At that time, I was a poetry writing student under Ted Kuzer, so of course that was the way I lived my life. But um, we, we would work with the kids, we would read poems that we thought would resonate with them, and there are, there are many in this book that would resonate with kids. Um, and then we would get them writing poetry. And even the little kids, the daycare kids who couldn't write, could begin to tell a poem, and we would write them down and print them for them, and then they, they could take them home to their parents. So, I mean, that is a terrific program with even little, little kids, and even more powerful, I think, with your elementary age kids. So, uh, just to let you know that, you, that this isn't this isn't just a one book one Nebraska for adults, it's for everyone. <laughs> oh, and, and kids are born into a a world of nursery rhyme and books. Yes, yes. So they're still hearing that when they're in daycare and in school. It's I think when we come to poetry as adults, it's more foreign because we've been away from it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But when kids come to it, it, it's still a bedtime story. Yes. Uh, and I have a poem that I could read that just speaks to that shit. Perfect. I, it's uh, by David McCleary. He and his mother both have poems in the anthology. That's cool. <clears throat> the title is My Mother Reading. To this day, when I see a volume of The Child's Christmas in Wales, it's 1967, and my, my mother is opening the book and reading to me. Candle, darkness, shadow, woods. 
Even now I hear her words and put the soft pillow of them to my ear. She would read aloud of poems with snow so deep she had to lift her voice to walk home through it. She would take me to the edge of the dark forest and suggest I wander off alone. Oh, what a wild mother to feed such sweetness to a child so young. I sat on one side, my sister on the other, and together we learned to listen and be still. We learned there was no shame in believing. We loved beginnings and hated endings. We wanted books to go on and on. We loved what was beautiful and wicked, the poor children that slept out on the ground, the fierce old women, and the small wren sitting in the window singing. Are you listening? She would ask. I always was. And once my sister fell asleep. When she woke, we reread page after page, but I didn't mind. It was a road I knew well. The animals were still grazing in the fields. The children came home again, found the door open, the table set, the fire burning. Very cool. We do have a comment that someone has here. Um, Thank you. About um, the fact that this book, for being one book one Nebraska, compared to all the other ones, they really, it's, you always had previously, if the author was still alive, one person to maybe hopefully travel the state and go into all the events and libraries. Really appreciate all of these off the poets in the fictional life. So many of them being available to that you don't have to just, well, I can't get the one person. There's just so such a you can you can find some of this from your area or just it just makes it so much easier for them to be able to plan some event that they can pick some that that they need. Well, 82 poets but not a lot, but and that that's really I like that. We're happy that's working for you. Yeah. We're happy that that was one of our, and that was one of the initial conversations I had with Mary Kay when we started this whole uh, idea of what we would do and what we would promote. And we thought, that's one big promotional point. And that's the different people every year. Yeah. There's yeah. so many that you can choose from to come to your library or your event. Absolutely. Bring multiple of them to you. And my experience has been that. Um, the writers have been very open to staying after the mm -hmm. program and answering questions and engaging with people. So they're not going to shoot out the door and, and not give the audience the chance to communicate. With them. That's great. That's true. Can I make a shameless uh, plug for sales to recruit? Please make a shameless <laughs> plug. Um, I did send out an email to all of the libraries in the state of Nebraska that I that I could that were high schools, colleges, city libraries, and uh, uh, offered uh, one book, one Nebraska. I mean, I should say Nebraska presents to for the for the occasion of one book, one Nebraska at eleven dollars a copy. So that's better than fifty percent off. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we we had several people, uh, several libraries took us up on it, but. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just don't want people to miss out on the chance to get a copy of this book in their in their collections because it's a it's a really super book and, and uh, we're we actually have the cost cut cut back to the bone at eleven dollars yeah, but um, and I'm not charging shipping for it either so so we can put that wow. here um, to yeah. make that yeah yeah, link right yeah if you get you understand go directly to Blackwater's Press it'll uh, yeah we can do that for you. And have you seen an uptick in uh, sales since you started? Well, yeah, this? we sold. We sold. Um, I don't know the exact count, but uh, a lot more than we were selling last year of it <laughs> <laughs> before. Before it gained some. Uh, 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 before its profile raised again, the first year it came out. The first year or two, we sold quite a few copies of it. It was our biggest seller for a number of years, about two years, and then and then you know sales drop off. But, sure. But, well, what, one of the reasons I asked is that um, I've heard, and I don't know that there have been a lot of stats on this, that once a book is selected for a one book, one city, or one book, one state, or a special nationwide book club, that sales really do follow. And of course, we hope that's true. We want. Yeah, and I think there may be uh, uh, libraries that picked it up, like going through, uh, directly through Ingram, or there are uh, publisher, our, our manufacturer for our books. And they may, and rather than going through the press, because yeah. uh, I 
talked to a couple of different libraries when we went there and they'd already got the answer. Right. So, but this is a less expensive way. And I'm not even sure that we didn't go to your, your publisher to get it. Probably so. Yeah. Because yeah. we have, as you know, we have like 100 copies around the state. We have book club kits here at the Library Commission that you can check out. We also have book club kits that we've placed at in the system offices. So there should be a book club kit for when your book club wants to read this. Somebody should move down. I think uh, we've gone over our time. Is there yeah, anything? Is there is anything any of you would like to say for the good of the group before we close? Any thoughts? Any any poems that didn't get read that should have? Well, we don't, we don't have 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, we don't. I'd like to say it's been really uh, fun working with the board and uh, right. since this has happened. And I especially want to thank Mary Kay for uh, picking up the, the ball to use a Nebraska metaphor and running. <laughs> uh, uh, I seriously wouldn't have been able to do this on my own. Well, thank you. So. But I, you're the guy who sent the email. <laughs> you got it all started. <laughs> Work your socks off. No yeah. pay. Well, and when we do think the Nebraska Center for the Book Board has been very excited and, and thrilled to be to be working with all of you on this one book point nebraska and also humanities nebraska we, we thank them for their support so the next thing coming up that we know about is at that june 7th here in lincoln yep mm -hmm. we'll get all those dates up on the calendar um uh, right up here this week as soon as possible we'll have them up here and so the rest of you when you schedule your events let us know and we'll put them on the calendar and i'd love to hear from librarians too to hear what they're doing and what kind of feedback they're doing. Yeah. And what poetry means in their community. Because that's really helpful to us and encouraging too. Sometimes you get the feeling you can talk to yourself. So it's always good to get a postcard or a letter or an email. And also, um, please do hop on our Facebook page and share what you're doing. It'll inspire other people who are trying to figure out hmm, what, we should, what would go over in our community. I have a, a blog too. Oh, in okay. honor of the one book, one Nebraska, the um, Nebraska, let's see, University of Nebraska Press asked me to do the blog. So I came up for a way to celebrate Nebraska all year mm -hmm. long. And I uh, posted it on the Facebook page, but I'll repost it. Oh, do, um, yes. So month by month, okay. it gives suggestions for what you mm -hmm. might do. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Please do repost that. We'll be sure to pick that up on uh, the website as well. I have the blog address too if you want to put it on the website. We will, so, definitely. I was going to type that right now, but I don't think we'll go. Okay. Nah. <laughs> Look for the link. Look for the link. It'll be up there. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. This has been fun. What are you going to do next week, Krista? All right. Yes. All right. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Really appreciate it. We have some. Great interaction and uh, like I said, I think I well people are saying I think this is a great choice for doing something really cool. We do great, yeah, certainly <laughs> agree. So, so um, thanks, Raj. Encompass Live <laughs> so far is the only thing on the internet called Encompass Live. So if you just Google us, use your search engine of choice. <clears throat> excuse me, you'll come up with our website. Um, today's show was recorded and it will be here. These are our upcoming shows. Right underneath them is a link to our archives, and today's will be at the top of the list, so look for that later this afternoon. It'll be posted here as long as um, YouTube cooperates with me. Um, uh, we'll have a link to that. We'll have, a we have links to the websites, <coughs> excuse me, and to the slides that Mary Joe had. Well, I'll be on there. I'll let you guys all know that's there. Um, and I'll just give you a heads up. This is our archives um, for Encompass Live going back to the very beginning of the show. This is the 10th year of our show. And we do have our archives going back all the way to the beginning, um, all, uh, all the way back to January 2009. If you get dizzy, I'm going to scroll to the bottom here quickly. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> all the way back to the beginning where we met the NLC. Does anybody good remember it? I don't remember, remember that one, but I'm sure I remember. Right, January 7th, 2009. Right, that was three sessions. Session. It did, yes. yes. There are a lot of us. <laughs> So, um, do we go back? That's for our archives. Do be aware it is going back to 2009. There will be things that are outdated, missing links, so, and whatnot. But we're librarians, it's what we do. We archive things. Um, I'm going to scroll back to the top again. 
We do have a search feature on here now, um, or you can also search all of our archives as well. We'll look for a particular topic or speaker if you want to. Um, next week on M Compass Live, I hope you'll join us, will be a big time library support in small towns. Um, this is a session by, we're um, going to have Roman Tylk Tymon. I'm not sure if that's actually you know, your name. Um, she's the author of To the Stars Through Difficulties. It's a novel about a woman going back to her hometown in Kansas, actually, to write her dissertation about Carnegie Libraries um, and how she goes about that. So it's about the Nebraska. Um, Kansas libraries, but we have Carnegie libraries here in Nebraska as well. Um, and uh, the author only has also done work with their um, Arts Council, National Endowment for the Arts, so she um, supports the kind of things in small town, um, getting support for your library. So join us next week to hear her talk about her book and um, what she's been doing with um, that. And also, please do on any of our other upcoming shows we have here. We're filling the schedule as we do. We also are on Facebook as well. Encompass Live has a Facebook page. Give us a like over there. We do post our um, updates to when we got new shows coming up, when the recordings are available, reminders about upcoming shows. So uh, give us a like over there if you're big on Facebook. Other than that, that wraps it up for this morning. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank, Thank you everybody for watching this morning, and we'll see you next time Thanks. on Encompass Live. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>